Asked Filipino wife number two exactly what she was asking me to buy her today. <laughs> she wanted me to buy her something. Can you tell everybody what it is that you want that you're wanting at the market or from Lazada, whatever? What is it, baby? Baby, listen, it's about fashion and women's health or whatever, you know. It's good entertainment as well, but... Now, folks, I'll let you watch her reaction. But basically, she says <laughs> she needs something. Of course, I don't understand her English hardly at all. And then she pulls up her shirt and shows me her right booby. <laughs> and there's something... <laughs> glued to a right booby, pasted, uh, it's like a pasty tape. I, I don't know how that thing is, is holding on there. It's like a silicone nipple. nipple and areola combined. And I'm just curious, baby, how do you get that to stick to the breast? Just stick. Because that's a, uh, yeah, like, you want me to show you? I'm, does it have adhesive? Is it sticky on the back? Yeah. You want me to show you? Do you I have, have to put like? One. Do you have to put like glue on there or what? No. They have a, That's already stick. They have already stick in the back, but yeah. You need to, you need, you need to put a plastic in there after the stick snap. You put plastic in You want me to show you? I have another one. Not this. Not my bow pizza. Another one. I just want to demo. Demo. Uh, son, can you get down off the table, buddy? Oh, I have another one. Yeah, I, I'm just... Uh, what's the purpose of this fake nipple and fake areola? Bacon. The, lady, the ladies know this. We don't, some ladies don't like a bra, right? It's hot in the body. Like, it's not comfortable. So we don't like bra. So after the, after, and also we don't like our boobies sticking out. Like, don't like this. Hold on, force G's in the way. <laughs> Watch out, boy. You're doing gymnastics here. Go ahead, baby. Do it again. Doing like what? The ladies don't like a bra. Some ladies don't like a bra like me. I don't like bra because it's so hot in my body. Yeah. It is sweat like that. Yeah. But we don't like to sticking out the boobies. The like the pointing the, the, like the, something like that. The nipples. Yeah. We don't like to see that. So they have somebody invented that. We have <laughs> put in the, the nipples in there. I show you something. So while we await her return, this is what she brought. And it's, I don't know, it's like silicone nipple slash areola covers. Yeah. And no. so you just peel off the plastic off the back. So you just peel like this? I don't mess it up if it's, uh, it's going to get you ruined. Can, I don't want to pay for that. Put, you can put so you just peel the back off, and then it's sticky. Oh, it is sticky. Okay, so this whole thing is sticky, and it goes over the nipple and the areola. Doesn't it hurt when you pull that off? No. Oh, come here, let me test it. You can taste it in 
No, I'm going to test it underneath <laughs> the shirt here. No. You can face it like this. Put it, yeah. Here, demonstrate on the camera. It looks like a nicotine patch, baby. Let me stop smoking. All right, hold on. I'm going to rip it off, right? Ready? One, two, three. That took hair off. No hurry. Baby. Okay, so now I understand they're, they're self-adhesive. How many uses can you get out of one of these fake things before you have to replace yeah, it? All right, so she, she's got the bag peeled off of this, dude. And it's, it's sticky, but the question is, if you throw the nipple thing against the wall, will it stick? And that's a painted wall. I, I think it will, ready? But you gotta get the right angle on the dangle. Here we go. There you go. The answer is, it will stick to the wall. Then the question is, oh, don't pull the paint off. Okay. All right, now this is what I want you to do. Come here. All right, listen, for today's video, the entertainment, what I want you to do is stand, look in the camera, don't look at me. Hold on, let me just get a reaction here. Okay, listen, what I want you to do is stand up against the wall, remove your shirt. No way! <laughs> hey, listen. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to see if I can throw Bye. these things and get them right positioned perfectly over over the appropriate you body me, part. You want me to punch you? No okay, way. all right. I tell you what, just leave your shirt on and see if I can do it. No way. Maybe I'm great at the game of darts. I'm no. curious. Come on, this is right here. No. Come on, be a good sport. No camera, I can do it. Okay, I'll cut the camera. No. Just right there. Let me see if I can if I can hit it. But not big over and Okay, now look. If it if it hits the wireless mic. Honey, you you playing to me now. Listen, listen. Hey, I'm in the YouTube business. Listen. You play. Okay, listen. Now I don't I don't want to hit the wireless mic because it might rip out some of the hairs off the dead cat. Cause that thing is sticky. So I'm gonna try to aim. I'm going to try to aim like right in this area here. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I need something to help me. Hold on a second. <laughs> Baby, just be still. I'm going to cooperate. Here. No, don't drive my body. And just a little That's X. That's dirty. No. It's a pin. It's not dirty. Come on. Just a little, right, there's a little X right here. <laughs> All right. X marks the spot. Here we go, folks. What you think? You think that, you think that I can get the, uh, Prosthetic. What, what is this called? Fake nipple? Yeah, nipple. Start with okay. Nipple. Can I get the fake nipple on my wife's right breast okay. without messing up the wireless mic or the dead cat that's on the wireless mic? This is what we got to do here. Ready? One. One two. Two. Hey, folks. How's everybody doing? Hope you enjoyed that introduction to this medical talk uh, slash health related video for expats, people who are thinking about retiring outside of their home country. Let me start this video out by saying I'm not a doctor. I'm not here giving med medical advice. Just like yesterday's video, I'm not giving legal advice if you have any health related questions or issues or problems, seek the advice of your doctor, a real doctor. Or if you're here in the Philippines and you go to a quack quack doctor, uh, it's your body, your health, do what you want to do. But don't, don't think that I'm here giving medical advice, I'm not. I'm giving personal opinions and experiences and the purpose of this video is to invoke thought. There you go. All the disclaimers out of the way, you've been served the legal cheese, so the lawyers are happy, right? Okay, so what was I going to talk about? I have no notes. I took no notes. I was just looking at the thumbnail from the video about, you know, lawyers, and I said, shit, I, I got some stuff to talk about, about medical stuff. Now, I get asked these questions all the time. I am not the expert 
especially if you're asking about the VA down in Manila and what they will do and this and that, I have no idea. I've stated this many times on videos previously. I'm not the expert because I don't know nothing about that. I get asked the questions all the time. I'm around guys in the bars and restaurants around here that talk about it. Um, so that's not my expertise. However, I have set the stage and set the forum. And down below is a big uh, piece of real estate called the comment section. Ask questions and hopefully other subscribers can answer them for you. And if you know everything there is to know about the VA, hey, write a paragraph, you know. So I've set the stage. There we go. Anyhow, I still like that mixed emotions on them fake. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> do you need health insurance? as an expat while living in a foreign country? The answer is yes. There you go, if you don't watch anything else in this video. Okay, I'm not trying to spend, spend your money for you by saying that. Obviously any type of insurance that you can afford um, that covers you in your particular situation and, and location is obviously good okay that's captain obvious but some of the things that you don't think about and that's what that's what i'm going to talk about today so you're retiring um you're retired military you're retired government you have this you have that you have the va you have uh, medicaid wh whatever you got medicare every country and I'm, look, I'm not saying that any of that stuff works anywhere. I'm just saying you have all this stuff, but you're thinking about moving outside of your home country. Does it work where you're going? And I'm not the guy to answer that, but I'm the guy to tell you that you need to figure this out prior to in case something happens to you and have a backup. And I'm going to talk about backups, right? Okay, so say you're coming to Southeast Asia. People ask the question, do they have medical insurance? I mean, I still get questions from people, uh, can I buy shampoo over there or do I need to bring shampoo? A lot of folks, especially like, you know, my, my family, never been out of the county that they grew up in. Uh, maybe they've been like in a tri-county area, never been out of the state. So a lot of these questions, folks, people, most Americans don't have a passport. They've never been out of the States and they ask these questions. All I can do is try to answer them as I go. Uh, get questions, do they have hospitals over there? Yes, they have hospitals. Varying levels of uh, expertise slash care slash technology. Um, so where do I start? Let's start by talking about where, in my opinion, the best medical coverage is if you're gonna to move to Southeast Asia. It's Thailand, hands down. Hands down, if you are the, one of those who are very concerned without being, with, with being close to proper medical care, uh, I would move to Thailand. I would retire in Thailand versus, let's just go with Philippines, the Philippines, Cambodia, Laos, or Vietnam. Hands down, Thailand. I tell people that if you're backpacking around this region and something happens to you, you don't need to worry about getting evacuated to the States immediately. Just get yourself to Thailand and you're gonna live. Um, so, so right off the bat, Thailand is way ahead of the Philippines on um, the level of care, the number of facilities, emergency medical services, my goodness. And so if you're one of those that are very concerned with that, that's something you need to uh, take into account. I'm not saying there aren't hospitals here in the Philippines. Obviously there are. Um, my son was born here in Angeles City at AUF. Uh, Batimana had to have a cesarean section and you know they handle business 
People here have heart attacks every day, strokes, they have these facilities. But understand I'm in a major city, Angeles City, or if you're in Manila, Makati, if you're way out in the province, that's gonna be a long ride for you to get to that higher level of care, depending on where you're at. Imagine you're on an island, you live on an island where um, they have a basic rudimentary clinic slash hospital, whatever they want to call it, and you have a heart attack. You're going to go there and then they're going to put you on the ferry as soon as uh, they can, but what if the ferry only runs five times a day? What if the ferry doesn't run at night? You're going to be stuck there in that facility, which is some places a basic aid station, uh, trying to make it to, say, Cebu City or one of the bigger cities that has a real hospital. Ain't no life flight here. Okay, so if you think you're sitting out there in the sticks and something happens, a helicopter's going to land, uh, no. You're looking at a long ride, rudimentary EMS services. Most of the ambulances that I've been in the back of here, they're nothing more than a van with a stretcher. Maybe they got some oxygen, but you're not getting an advanced life support ambulance with a paramedic and an EMT, uh, drug box, defibrillator, everything else that goes with it. It's not like that here, okay? All right, so I could talk about all these different things to consider about where you're going to live, but the topic of this video is insurance. So let's assume uh, you have a problem, you get to a hospital here in Southeast Asia, what should you expect? Depending on what country you're in, it's going to be like night and day, totally different, okay? Um, so what if you have some type of insurance from your home country? Will they accept it? I can't answer that. Only people that are gonna answer that is that particular hospital that you end up in. But the more important thing is that the hospital that you end up in, are they capable of processing that insurance or putting a call into that insurance? Okay? Say you go out and you end up in a hospital in a province out here some of them don't have the capability to make an international call, much less process your foreign insurance card. They're going to look at you like, what the hell is that? Uh, you know, no, they don't have that capability. They don't have the capability to process a credit card. Therefore, you're going to be paying cash up front, uh, cash and carry for any treatment that you need. Think about how scary that is. This isn't Kansas. A lot of things here, cash and carry, most medical treatment included. So you show up at a hospital that doesn't have the capability to process any of that, you can have every insurance card known to man. They want cash, okay? Um, now you contrast that to some of the hospitals in Thailand. Let's take Pattaya, Pattaya Bangkok Hospital, for example. You pull up to that place, there's five or six people helping them out of the car. There's three or four ladies standing around figuring out where you need to go. There are every ATM machine, from, there's an ATM machine from basically every bank. There's a bank of ATM machines outside the hospital. There's some inside. Some banks, or a bank at least one, has a branch inside the hospital. There is banking capability and the ability for you to pull money any which way you want to do it. It's accessible. Their billing department can process pretty much any credit card and they can deal with insurance companies. If you hand them an insurance card, they are off to the races. They're gonna put that call in, they're gonna run it through their system, they're gonna figure out, can we bill this insurance? Is this injury or illness covered by this foreigner's insurance card? They have the capability. 
versus being at a hospital here in the Philippines, nobody has any load to send a text, much less make an international call, much less to be able to process a foreign insurance card. That is a huge difference and a huge factor. Okay, say you're in, the, in, in Laos, I'm not, and I'm not picking on the Philippines, folks, I'm just here and it's what's popping in on my mind, but let's move over to Vientiane Lao. You, uh, personal experience. Ended up at one of the hospitals there. Same thing, cash and carry, and they want the cash up front. Now, if something's going on and you're a foreigner, they're gonna start treating you, but they want that money. You have to hump it out and pick up some money to make them know that you're gonna be able to pay the bill. So at you know, whatever time of the day, night, if you don't have enough money in your pocket, you're out roaming the streets trying to find an ATM machine. At the time, and, and let's just say at the time, because I can only speak from my personal experience, and my personal experience didn't happen yesterday. This is over a period of over a decade, right? Um, and obviously as technology and communications improve, things are come, starting to come online. But this is not something I prepared for, nor thought that I was, you know, going to uh, have this experience at that particular time. And now I'm going around trying to find an ATM machine at, that works so I can pay uh, for the treatment that was going on at the time. It's a long story, I'll tell that in a book. Versus being, in Th versus being in Thailand, you just show up at the hospital. Trust me, there's an ATM machine nearby that works. There's folks there that can make a phone call that can figure out, uh, can we bill any of this, this individual's insurance companies? Uh, um, <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the types of insurance, and, and I'm speaking from a Thailand perspective because I've never bought insurance here in the Philippines, right? But in Thailand, if you go and you try to get health insurance, a lot of the companies, it's very similar to the states, you know, depending on what your age is, it's whether or not, uh, I say whether or not, basically depending on your age is what type of physical you're gonna take, how much the premiums are gonna be, will they approve you, will they not? Okay, so you go over there and say you're a 35 year old dude, non-smoker, don't drink, whatever. Well, obviously you're, you're gonna get approved. And, and that's a no brainer. Versus if you go over there and you're 60 something years old, you're filling out this questionnaire and if you have so enough pre-existing conditions, they're not going to uh, accept you as a client and, you, and you're gonna get rejected for the medical, the health and medical insurance, right? But, and, and this is really one of the purposes of the video and what I recommend is that you get accident insurance. Now, everybody that I know you know, even in their 60s, what, what have you, they had no problem getting accident insurance. I know people who have been declined on medical insurance, you know, due to their age, their pre-existing conditions and health. Okay, but you get the accident insurance and I'm gonna tell you why. And at the time it was roughly 350 to 400 US dollars for the year. And this is for a 60, uh, I think a 60 year old indiv individual. So just, just round it right there, 400 bucks a year for accident insurance. So what you do, if you really think about it and you weigh your risks, all right, you know, take out all the health, the health issues, right? But what are your risks being here in Southeast Asia? A lot of us ride motorbikes, okay? Because it's an economical form of transportation, everybody over here rides motorbikes. So you're riding a motorcycle. A lot of us do. That's a huge risk in a way. Okay. Um, people die. People are injured in motorbike crashes every day over here, just like anywhere else in the world. And so, if you're riding a motorbike around, there's a good probability at some point you could be in a motorbike crash. And when I was a young guy, 
this old dude told us, he said, there's two types of riders, and he didn't make this up. He said, there are those who have crashed and those who will crash. That's the only two type of riders there are. Um, I'm in the category of have crashed. Um, almost bought the farm back in the late 90s, mid 90s, whatever, on a motorbike. And I'm here to tell you that that hospital bill, my goodness, you crash a motorcycle in America, ooh, even with insurance. Um, it took me a long time to get out of that hole that I, that, that I had dug for myself due to that crash. Now, over here, medical, you know, medical services are a lot cheaper, obviously. It's pennies on the dollar compared to the West. But one of your big uh, possibilities slash risks, risks, hard to say that word, is being in a motorbike crash, okay? So if you're in a motorbike crash, and you have that accident insurance, wow, that is awesome. That's gonna potentially save your butt and your pocketbook if you have that and you show up to the hospital. And so anybody living in Thailand, uh, especially, I highly recommend that you at least get the accident insurance for the sole purpose of taking care of your butt if you lay down your, your motorbike or get hit by a car while you're riding your motorbike. Now that, that accident policy obviously covers a lot more than just riding motorbikes, but it's easy to get, much easier to get than the, the regular medical coverage. So if you don't take anything else out of this, I would say if you're a motorbike rider, motorcycle rider, or riding trikes a lot, you know, myself included, it really is a benefit to have some type of accident policy that covers uh, medical expenses in case of an accident, right? And so there you go. I think that was the purpose, the main purpose of this video was to talk about that and also say, what is a backup? Say you come over here in mid 60s, nobody will approve you for medical insurance you have stuff in the states but the stuff don't work here what do you do well one answer is to have some cash in reserves you've got to have enough cash in reserves saved up that if nothing no other policy and nothing else will help you and that hospital you're in don't accept credit cards or wire transfers you need to have uh, some type of little savings, some little lump sum of cash as a backup to pay that hospital bill to save your ass. Now, I know a lot of people moving over to this region, you're coming over here on a budget. We all say we're on a budget, which basically means we're broke. And if I hurt your feelings, hey, tough shit, look. We're all broke just on different levels. A rich guy said that one time. Even rich people are broke. They're just broke on different levels. So don't get too upset over that. But if you're coming over on a shoestring budget, you don't have any insurance, and something happens to you, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm just gonna get on a plane and go back to the States. All right. You've thought this out, but you haven't. Because if you have a stroke or your condition doesn't allow you to get on a commercial airliner, and especially with all this crap been going on in the world for the past two or three years, um, you know, if, if you're low sick or all messed up or what have you, you can't get a coach seat on Delta from Manila back to LA, right? It, it, it's not that easy. Hopefully you can, you know, if you, you know, broke your leg or whatever. Yeah, just get on the next flight back to the States and, and deal with your medical problem there. But if you have a stroke to where you can't get on a Delta flight 
or you know you're laid up on a ventilator or something like that you ain't making it through security at the airport. You're not boarding that flight. It has to be a medical evacuation flight, which is tens of thousands of US dollars. So with that said, okay, A, if you don't have anything else, you need to have some cash to back up treatment here in the local country, whether it's the Philippines, Thailand, wherever, right? Now, used to what they did let me go off on a tangent here used to you know certain places it's cash and carry if you don't pay they don't treat now, times have changed a bit like in thailand I'm, i know i can only speak my own experience again say you have to have something done you can't pay all the money i've heard that now they'll just take your passport and hold your passport until you come pay for it that's what i've heard uh Hospitals here, and I'm not making this up, will not let you leave the hospital until you're paid in full. Security won't let you leave. When you go to leave, security's there, and if you don't have the, the discharge papers with the receipt, you don't leave the hospital. This, helped, this happened to her sister when they couldn't pay the bill when the baby was born, and they had to stay an extra day or two or three days until... Uh, you know, enough money was sent down there to pay the bill and let them get out of the hospital. You can't make this shit up. So, you can't pay the bill, you're stuck there, you're just jacking up the bill, right? So, cash on hand. If you have no other method, no other mechanism, no other way to cover your medical treatment, you have to have cash. How much cash? Well, smoke. I can't tell you that. You're gonna to have to judge and base that on your own risk analysis and what you're comfortable with. Are there people here living here right now with no insurance, no savings, no credit card, and living here every day? Yep, sure are. Bunch of broke Americans over here with, with no backup system if they have a stroke, a heart attack, or get hit by a jeepney. What are they gonna do? Well, what most of them do is, you know, family starts calling, calling people in the states or wherever, trying to get money sent, uh, GoFundMe pages. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, a hospital is not gonna let you run up, you know, a 5,000 US dollar bill without them knowing somehow or another, you're gonna pay that bill, all right? St. Kansas. Okay, so A, have cash in reserve. B, have a credit card in reserve. And I'm not talking about a credit card with, five, with a $500 balance. I'm talking about a credit card with some fucking meat on it. Okay? I'm talking about a big old meaty credit card. You know, if like, I started to compare you want a meaty credit card, right? I started talking about the old lady in Janice, but uh, you, you want a meaty ass credit card. How much on there? I'll throw out there and say at least 10,000 US dollars, okay? You need $10,000 in credit on a credit card that's not expired, you know, keep an up to date one. You keep 10 grand on that credit card that's sort of like a mini insurance policy. If you can get to a hospital that is technologically advanced enough to accept credit cards. If you are in Thailand, technology is not an issue. Maybe they take you to one hospital out in the country uh, that, that doesn't have this capability. As soon as you can, just give them a transfer you to, you know, again, I talk about Bangkok Patia Hospital. Uh, Bangkok Hospital, just get there. You got that magical credit card with 10,000 US dollars credit on it, that's gonna go a long way in saving your butt, okay? If you could get a higher credit line, I would just say get the highest credit line you can get on one credit card or two credit cards or three credit cards and you keep those as the emergency way to save your life. That's it. How much is your life worth? 
Is your life worth the time to, uh, you know, if you're planning on retiring in five years, just bank, not bank up, just open a few credit cards over the next five years. Don't use them. You have to have the discipline not to use them because that's your ripcord. Those credit cards could potentially save your life if something happens to you. Okay, so we talked about cash, credit cards, rich friends and family that'll help you out and send you money. Um, what, what else? What's the other ways? You know, and that's the thing about when you don't take notes or have any script or anything, sometimes you just totally lose your train of thought. And that's what just happened to me. Maybe that's a sign of dementia coming on. Damn. Now I can't remember where I put all my emergency credit cards for medical treatment. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a good point. It's a very good point. Damn. If you have emergency credit cards or if you have an emergency stash, you have to have somebody that you trust and this is, a, and I can't tell you how to do this, but I'm, but you have to have somebody that you trust is able to access this. Okay, so for example, you're out and about, boom, you start having a heart attack, they take you straight to the hospital, and you have money in your bank account, you have an ATM uh, ATM card back at your hotel in the safe or your house, what have you. Um, you have to have somebody to be able to go get it. Now, obviously, if you're married and stuff, that's not a big issue. But if you're a single dude living here as a bachelor, which a lot of y'all are, a lot of people will be, and you see this every day, when dudes go down, there's nobody there to help them. Literally nobody. Maybe their neighbor who loosely talks to the guy, doesn't have a key to his place, has no idea where he keeps his will, stuff like that. Folks, that shit here happens every day because most of us are not prepared like we should be. We're not prepared to die and we're not prepared to, to suddenly have to go to the hospital. And that's one thing I learned working as a paramedic back in the day was that unless somebody committed suicide, nobody planned on dying that day. That's another story. I've talked about that in the past. But you have to have somebody trusted with access to that money to be able to bring it to the hospital. Uh, however you want to set it up. But if you're a loner and you don't have a permanent girlfriend or a wife and, and you don't know the neighbors and this and that, hell, I had one buddy tell me that he entrusted all his stuff with the bartender at this uh, resort. She'd been there for 20, 30 years. She's known her a long time. It's not a relationship other than just friends. And so if anything happens to him, the bartender knows how to help him out. I'm not saying that's what you do. I'm just giving you an example. Me, you know, I got the old lady. I have friends here. I have expat friends here that I trust that can assist. And now that I sit here and think about it, I need to sit down with them and have a closer more detail, talk about what I want them to do if something happens to me, right? I mean, they obviously, the old lady's gonna call them, uh, things would get connected, but not, you know, just the fact that I did this video, I'm gonna scratch out a couple of pages of details uh, uh, to get to my buddies just in case, you know, to make it easier on every, everybody. Okay, medical evacuation flights, they are expensive. Are they covered with certain travel insurance policies? Yes. So if you're coming on vacation, um, anything temporary, uh, well, temporary is a loose word. If you can get some type of travel insurance, get it, especially if it has evacuation policies, stuff like that, which is just astronomically expensive that you're never going to be able to pay for. Look at these travel insurance policies and get the highest amount you can get. You know, if you're coming for two weeks or a month, it's a no-brainer. Now, some people who are going like six-month backpacking trips, some of those policies get a little bit more expensive because you're bebopping countries. 
Um, you know, if you just come to one country for say two weeks, it's pretty reasonable. But if you're going to multiple countries over a six month period, um, you know, it's going to cost more money. I think I have a couple links. Um, I'll have to look and see if I've got some old affiliate links to tr uh, travel insurance companies. If I do, I'll put them down in, in the description. Again, I'm not saying I'm the expert. I'm just a dude that's invoking thought to say, hey, maybe I should check this out on my own. Because if something severely happens, you can't get on a commercial flight. Hey, sweetie girl. The baby's sleeping? Yes. Okay, sweetie. Well, I'm almost done, then I'll be real quiet, okay? Come here, give Papa a hug. Love you. <laughs> she told me to be quiet because her baby doll's sleeping over there. Mm, okay, give Papa five minutes, okay? Papa, stop making so much noise. <laughs> um, anyhow, travel insurance policy, hopefully one that will cover a medical evacuation flight. already covered a uh, okay oh and again if okay in my my personal situation um, due to the expense of a medical evacuation flight right back to the states we're basically on the other side of the world in Southeast Asia it can't get no more ex expensive that's not my plan if something happens to me you want to know what my plan is. If something happens to me, I want to try to get to Thailand. Now, obviously, over the past couple, two, three years, that was not an option. I was stuck here. As everything opens up, it's a different story. But prior to all this going on in the world, you know, a lot of people, are they fly into Bangkok and they backpack around Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, right? That's what you do. And I just told everybody and it was my plan that say I'm in Cambodia or I'm in Vietnam or I'm in Laos and I get hurt I'm gonna pay somebody to get me back across that Mekong River back into Thailand that's my plan um, whether I got to take a bus a private tax however you know if as long as I wasn't just actively bleeding out if I had a damn Lower leg fracture, not a femur fracture, I guess I'd go to the hospital first, but if I had a lower leg fracture, I would splint that and say, take me to the Thai border and get me back to Thailand. And then I know I'm gonna live, and I know I can access money, and I know they can accept credit cards, and I know I'm gonna live. That's my plan. My plan is not to get back to America, it's to get to Thailand. That's been my plan for a decade. Um, so there you go. A backup plan with plenty of credit cards, a stash of cash. Okay, there you go. Um, should I have medical insurance? I'm a pirate looking at 50. I'm coming up on 50. Yeah, I should. So this is that's one of them situations. Don't do as I do. <laughs> Just sort of take my bias as to what I say. And maybe this video motivates me to go out and see if I can get some medical insurance. But I'm just one of those guys, I don't go to the doctor. I don't go to the doctor. I go to the dentist every six months at least. I don't go to the doctor, I don't wanna know. Uh, I just wanna live until I die. And the only physical I had was like a month or two ago and that was for required paperwork. I had no idea what they were gonna say or come back with. Shit, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm just getting started. Uh, anyhow, folks, long rambling video to answer the question, if you're going to retire outside of your home country, you're gonna retire in a foreign country. That word is so funny because if you're, you know, from Southeast Asia and you go to America, now you're in a foreign country. So. I don't even like using that word. I really despise that word, but I have to use it for the keywords because that's what Google understands and the algorithm understands, right? There really is no such thing as foreign because we all live on planet Earth. There are no foreigners. I mean, I guess if Martians came here, you could call them foreigners, but then really not. We're all in the same solar system. So that's the only reason I use the word foreign. I, I, I just really don't like the word. 
Um, you know, my kids are half Filipino and half American. So if they go to America, are they foreigners? If they're here, are they foreigners? What are they? Why do we even have to use that word? <laughs> I have to use it because if I don't use that in the keywords, then Google's algorithm doesn't know that I'm talking about retirement stuff. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed this video. Probably you only watched the first part of the uh, pasty, whatever you call that, the pasty throwing contest. Maybe I'll see if they want to incorporate that into the bikini contest that I'm going to on Sunday. Bikini contest is back over at Scorebirds. This is a historic moment. I think it's what, July 10th? Anyhow, it's Sunday from 2 to 6, Scorebirds Hotel, Angeles City. Just, you know, one block back from Walking Street, basically on the back side of Walking Street. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. It means life is returning. I don't want to say it's returned, but that was sort of like the milestone here. The thing that everybody misses is the bikini contest. What's the world coming to when you can't have a damn bikini contest? But now it's back on. It's back on. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm carrying my cameras. I may just enjoy the moment. There'll be plenty of people there filming and making videos, I'm sure. So if one doesn't come across uh, from this guy, it's because I decided to just enjoy the moment. And it's, and it's not like I'm being stingy. There'll be dozens and dozens of videos you can, uh, you can view, I'm sure. And then once the dust settles, I'll go over there with my big Sony camera and get some great footage as I'm learning to produce better quality videos, slowly. Well, it only took me 10 years to start figuring out these manual settings on the camera. Okay, if you have any questions about insurance, call an insurance agent. <laughs> yeah, you can do your Google research, but how about just calling an uh, insurance agent or going to one of these insurance companies and sitting down and asking the people who sell the insurance instead of listening to me what do i know if you're not a subscriber right there bottom right hand corner of your screen hit that overstay road sign and get on board my train i would certainly appreciate it and i say thanks to the 40,500 plus friends here on the channel who have already subscribed thank you very much my friends i'll see y'all on the next one What is going on with that? Come over here and show the video so they can see what I'm looking at. You look like a cat. What, what is going on with this? Folks, you didn't know how much medical stuff was going on that inspired this video. <laughs> now I have a question. I'll give you 100 pesos if you put that thing on your nipple and see what happens when we pull that thing off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, come here. Will it take the hair off? No! This man is not a doctor. Ready? One. One two. Two. Three. three. <laughs> Baby. Baby, listen, listen. That was going straight for its target. And you moved, you moved out of the way. You just robbed me from the Guinness Book of World Records. Why, Marquitos, I'm not stupid. It's hurt that no. Baby, how is a fake nipple going to hurt? I don't see how it's going to cause any pain. The folks, disclaimer here, no Filipinas and no boobies were harmed in the making of this video. No, it's not sticky, no, you what do you do? Hey, let me give it one more try. Oh, it's still sticky, yeah. Let's give it one more try. Okay. Oh, that's hurting. All right, now this time be still, baby. I'm okay. serious. I want to see, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to play darts against somebody out there. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming right here. Okay. You ready? One, two, three.
baby. No, give him the nipple back. Give him the nipple. One more time. Are you ready? My face off. I'm not trying to hit you in the face. I'm aiming right there next to the wireless microphone. I can do it. So, so let's start this all over. If you didn't have a shirt on, okay, I either got to go left or right. I'm going for one uh, runway one left here. Just because she's got more skin exposed. Here we go. Ready? Slow motion. <laughs> hey, look at that, folks. Look at that. If in the in the skin stick too much, but not if we in the. Have you ever used the fake booty pads? No, I know the answer. I know the answer to that, baby, because you you middle in the middle and you got much back, so I know you don't need them fake rear end pads. I like okay. I like the big one of this, like do like this. Okay, so the purpose of these is so you don't have to wear a bra oh, and your nipples yeah. don't poke out through the shirt. Yeah. I don't like because I always have to. <laughs> you don't like them pointers? Might scratch somebody in the eye. Okay. All right, uh, folks, let's give wife number two a round of applause for being a sport, explaining the mysterious uh, silicone sticker <laughs> that she had on. Let me ask you this, what if you sweat a lot? It'll drop off? That, that's not the problem, babe. They have a waterproof, but... You need a waterproof. Sweat proof. 200 plus for one, like like 200 that. pesos for one? 200 plus. That's for some, some. four US dollars. Then you need to buy me one. Okay, you thank you very much for your block of instruction on women's health and uh, fashion. Some, some girls don't want the bra. Like me, I don't like bra. Yeah, I like all natural, baby. I mean, I'm, I'm not a bushman like my buddy Smitty. You know, I don't like all natural in certain locales, in certain areas. But I don't care if you wear a bra or not. That's up to you. It's your body. You need to find me like this. <laughs> it's your duty. <laughs> it's my duty to purchase <laughs> sticky silicone fake nipple areola yeah, combinations. They have a... Uh, they have many colors. They have a pink color. I'm uh, not like light pink. Like, like same like this. They have brown. They have like black. Yeah. You have any with my my logo? What logo? Overstay Road logo. No. I'm not interested. 